when we're looking at the pigeonhole principle, right, I don't want to look at a, like a formulaic way of doing these. I want to think about an intuitive way. Now, the key thing here, right, the key thing is, are you asked to justify your answer? If you're not, right, the working that you need to provide is minimal. You don't have to write this out every time. This is a justification. And it becomes more apparent um, with uh, more complex problems. Okay. Well, for something like this, there is no justification required. All I'm asked is to find, right, if I'm assigning n people to eight levels of karate, okay, I was probably like the Nubis level. What's the Nubis level? Like white, white belt? Is that? Yeah, okay. So I was like a white belt, right? I think I did it for like a month. Um, if there's at least 29 in at least one, the easy thing to do here, okay, the easy thing to do would just be, yeah, well, if there's 29 in at least one, I can just do 29 times 8. No, why not? Oh. Okay, so what's the problem with doing this? When I just see two numbers and multiply them together. Right, okay. And they'll often say, and again, we have to be careful with the language, they want to find the minimum n number of people, right? They want to find the smallest number of pigeons which satisfies the condition. Now, when I just see these numbers and multiply them together, yes, that condition is met, but it's not the minimal amount, right? It's not the smallest amount. So rather, you want to think about, again, draw the diagram that helps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, here's my eight levels of karate. And the worst case scenario is that if I have all of them and they're all spread out, they're all assigned to one, but I'm spreading them all out. So where the condition's not met, that's exactly what Aloro said, 28 in all of them. And so what do I know about the pigeonhole principle? The pigeonhole principle has it, says that if you have one more, just one more, <coughs> n plus one, then this guy here, he must make this condition true, okay? So when you see this, you want to think, okay, let's go one less than the condition. That's kind of the worst case scenario. And so n would equal to 8 times 28 plus 1. And what does that give me? 225. And that is the number, or the smallest number, of people required to make this condition true. Now, this can be uh, represented in a formulae kind of way. Um, I guess you could say, how would you say this? Yeah, so if k is your pigeons, so if n is your people, so n is the number of, pi of pigeons, I guess. Uh, yeah, so... Yep. Yeah, I guess maybe we can say how many pigeons in each hole. What would that be? Like P, maybe? If this is P, yeah. then we just say P minus 1 plus 1, right? Um, that's maybe a guide to help you make sure you're, doing, you're on the right track. Yeah? yeah? Does that make a bit more sense? Yeah. Uh, actually, James showed it to me the other day. So. so you're thinking about, okay, what's one less than the condition that I need? Right? One less than the number of uh, pigeons in each one. Multiply by that by the number of holes that we have, and we add one to that, right? So again, I, I still like to draw it out just to make sure I'm doing it correctly, um, but that's one way you can think about it, if you want a more formulaic kind of way, right? That makes so much more So much, which way? Oh. This thing? Oh, uh, okay. Again, what works for you? You just have to look at it. So what? And I love it, I love it, because everyone has different ways of understanding things. Like when I talk about algebra with my uh, year eight, some of them, you know, hate it when I draw pictures to represent algebra. Some of them say, oh, that makes so much more sense now. And everyone's different, so find the way that works for you, is what I'm saying, basically. Okay.